Um, Callan Bentley here. I'm at Sidling Hill in Maryland on Interstate 68. Um, you can see it's a little windy. You can probably hear that it's a little windy. Um, and that's pretty typical for this road cut. Um, this mountain ridge behind me here is Sidling Hill. And um, it's long been a barrier to navigation. Um, there used to be a road that sort of wrapped around a low spot in Sidling Hill, but it was sort of like a hairpin turn. And people kept driving off the edge of that hairpin turn. So at some point they decided they were gonna blast through the heart of the hill and kind of transect the hill for a more direct route that would be safer for automobile traffic. In so doing, they revealed a really spectacular fold. This is a fold that goes down in the middle. It's called a syncline, and it reveals strata that are part of um, the lowermost Mississippian package of rocks in this part of the world. Um, so there are two main formations here, the Rockwell formation at the base and the Purse Lane formation higher up. And um, because of differential weathering and the more quartz-rich composition of the Purse Lane, we end up having the uh, middle part of the fold weather way more slowly than the flanks of the fold, which are more mud-rich. So it ends up making the mountain into a, um, well, it ends up making a mountain. All right, so, so basically the quartz ridge stuff pokes out and is a ridge former here in the Appalachians. There's a lot more to see here, um, but um, that's the, the big story, the basic story. And uh, we'll take a look at some of the additional details. Here's the Rockwell diamictite, which is the oldest of the units here. And then as you work your way up section, you get into the Rockwell formation proper, which is alternating the siltstones and shales. You can see some pretty profound differential weathering there, where the shales are being etched out, leaving the sand or the siltstones sticking out in high relief. And then as you work your way up section further, you can see up at the top that we've got the purse lane formation, and that is uh, dominated by a more quartz rich sandstone. There's a very prominent black coal running through the middle. That coal is not very pure, but it is, uh, it is organic rich. So that's the youngest of the strata here. And if you zoom out, and kind of take a look at the overall structure, you can get a sense that the quartz rich composition of the purse lane up at the top ends up um, reducing the rate of weathering of that unit. So even though structurally that's the lowest part of this fold, topographically it's the highest part and it makes the crest of Sidling Hill. So we're looking uh, across the road cut here and um, you can see that they're doing some construction. They're actually building a, uh, a safety fence to prevent rocks falling off the outcrop onto the road. If we uh, zoom in here on this uh, particular little crane, just behind it, you can see this dark unit here. And as you go up, you can see that that dark unit has an angular relationship relative to most of the strata of the Rockwell. And uh, that's actually half of a river channel. So river channels in cross section have a, uh, a shape that looks kind of like a smiley face from the side. Originally, of course, it would have been oriented something like this. Um, but then uh, later tectonic forces uh, folded it into its current modern day position. Um, but you can see that it's not filled with high energy evidence. We don't see, um, you know, gravel in there, a conglomerate or something like that. There are some lower layers that are silty, but then the uppermost part of this unit is filled with a black shale. So what that probably is actually is an oxbow lake. So this channel that got cut into uh, the surrounding soft sediment and then um, river meandering ended up cutting it off. So the water there became stagnant and um, you ended up getting deposition of this very fine clay that's very rich in organic matter. So, um, Earlier, we were down on that bridge down there, so um, you can see there's like a little breezeway that's crossing over the highway, and um, that's Interstate 68. Um, and um, now we've walked up this set of stairs to uh, get a better look at the fold close up. 
And so we're looking at the um, north facing slope over there. And one thing you can probably tell is there's a lot of area, especially right in the middle of the fold near the, the hinge or the axis of the syncline where it looks wet. And that is not a coincidence. So what's going on there is that groundwater is flowing down. It's basically, you know, forming originally as rain falling on the mountain and it's finding its way down underground and it's finding its way through um, porous, permeable rock units like sandstone and it's being blocked by impermeable uh, rock units like shale. So basically the sandstone's acting like an aquifer and the shale is acting like an aquitard and that channels the fluid flow of the groundwater. But now there's this giant vertical rock face here. And so that water that's flowing on top of these impermeable shale layers is flowing downhill until suddenly, boom, it pops out into the open air and runs down the face of the outcrop. So right there at the um, sort of lowest structural spot in a lot of these layers, you see water weeping out of the uh, road cut face. And in winter, that water freezes. And so you get these big masses of ice that build up on the, uh, the face of the Sidling Hill road cut. Right where you see that white truck curving around and going past the red outhouse there, that's uh, an area where the sedimentary layers don't crop out as prominently. And um, you can see it's sort of a gentle slope, but um, not especially vegetated. There's a coniferous tree on one side and uh, down by the white barrel, there's a couple of deciduous trees. But that little zone there, that's the Rockwell diamictite. And it is one of several latest Devonian diamictites in the Appalachian Basin. Um, a diamictite has a uh, extremely poorly sorted texture where you've got very large outsized clasts um, juxtaposed with really fine mud and it's sprinkled with sand. It's very poorly sorted. And so you can get that sort of a texture in a sedimentary deposit with uh, a couple different mechanisms. One's a submarine landslide. And then another possibility is that it was glacially deposited. Now, one of the signatures of glaciation is faceted and striated clasts. And that's definitely uh, the case at um, uh, another outcrop of this Rockwell diamictite on Corridor H in West Virginia near Bismarck. Um, I haven't found striated class here at this particular outcrop, but um, they're probably there. And so that's really interesting. It's evidence of this late Paleozoic Ice Age, a relatively brief uh, cooling event, at least here in the late Devonian, um, that uh, is correlated with the franian famanian uh, boundary and the, um, uh, the mass extinction event that's associated with the late Devonian. Not the end of the Devonian, but the late Devonian. So it's quite possible that there was some sort of major climate perturbation during that time that ended up uh, triggering this massive loss of life. And this diamictite might be evidence of that. So if you look out the window here to my left, um, you can see the Devonian Hampshire formation. This underlies the strata at Sidling Hill. And uh, what I did is I drove through the Sidling Hill road cut going west. And I turned around at High Germany Road and I'm heading back east again, back towards Hancock and DC and Baltimore. And you can see just these beautiful red beds here. These are Devonian molass shed off of uh, the Acadian orogeny. So um, when in the late Devonian, the microcontinent Avalonia collided with North America, it raised a range of mountains. Those shed off a bunch of plastic sediment that swamped the uh, carbonates of the Helderberg group and buried them first under deep sea uh, siliciclastics, um, stuff like the Millboro Formation and the um, Brailier. And um, then eventually when the basin was filled, then rivers started prograding out over that uh, package of deep water clastics and deposited highly oxidized terrestrial clastics. So what I mean here is like sands that were deposited in river channels and then uh, red muds that were deposited on the floodplain uh, adjacent to that river. So that's um, 
what underlies the the package at Sidling Hill. And the, the diamictite up there at the base of the Sidling Hill section is right there at the end of the Devonian um, in the beginning of the Mississippi and at that boundary. So we're about to go through uh, Sidling Hill again. So um, let's take a look at the outcrop as we roll through. Steeply dipping layers of the rock well with the differential erosion of the shale layers. Here's some of that slick, watery uh, cascade coming out of the uh, aquitards. And then we're rolling back down on the east side here, the strata of switch direction, and we pass that oxbow lake. We just went under the, the breezeway. So that's it for Sidling Hill. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little geological tour. Thanks for joining me on this outing.